Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado. And today I am going to go over the 2024 X-Line Kia Sportage in white with the black interior. I'm gonna focus uh, a good chunk of the video on the interior and the infotainment system, but I am gonna go ahead and uh, give you a quick walk around on the vehicle and show you kind of the cool touch points of what the everyday driver would probably want to see and know about this car. If there is a way that I can help you find a vehicle, please let me know. I'm in Southern Colorado. We do ship all around the country and we sell at MSRP. Uh, we have plenty of inventory and incoming inventory now on pretty much everything uh, except plug-in sportages really and hybrid sportages. Those are the two that we still got to order it seems like. Everything else uh, I could usually get uh, pretty quickly. But let's get to it. If you're new to my channel, uh, this is what we do. We walk around the, video, the vehicles and show you the cool things about them that the everyday driver would want to know. Right away, I love the Boomerang daytime running lights in the 2024s and the 2023s. Uh, this model also has LED daytime running lights. You have Kia's signature tiger nose grille right across the front. Uh, which is really cool in this vehicle. It really does stand out. You have Kia's script badging right there that says Kia right there big and bold on the hood. And then you have the glossy black and the uh, melting in right there with the bottom grille as well, the bottom fascia. Here are the wheels and the tires. Um, this model here has the Kumho's. Uh, which, uh, not a horrible tire. Some people don't like them. Uh, I've honestly never had a problem with them. I've had a couple vehicles with them. And uh, I do like the wheel design that Key has been doing lately on their vehicles. Coming up to the side of the vehicle, you can see that the caps are black with the LED turn signals right there. You have your roof rails here in piano black, glossy black. Again, not really a problem on the white. And then you can see where the sunroof comes uh, from the top of the vehicle, and I'll show you that more when we get into the vehicle. And there's your shark fin, your radio antenna shark fin, which is pretty cool. Coming back here to the door, I just wanna show you, you have the one press. So if the uh, door is locked, you can press it once. If the key's in your pocket, in your purse, what have you, it'll unlock the door. Press it twice in succession, it'll lock all four door, unlock all four doors. And then if you do it the opposite, when you walk away, you can press it and it'll uh, lock the doors behind you as well. This one here again is the 2024 Sportage X-Line all wheel driving glacial white pearl with the black interior. Some of the little extras that are on this particular vehicle are going to be the tow hitch, the interior lighting kit, the auto dimming mirror with home link, the carpeted floor mats, and the, uh, what did I miss there? Oh, that's it. Those are the four items that were extra on this vehicle. MSRP 36435, 2.5 liter uh, GDI four cylinder, and again, all wheel drive. Push and pop gas cap. If the car is locked, uh, that will not open. If the car is unlocked, all you do is push and pop it and it'll open. I need to find a better place to do these videos because this is pretty noisy, but it beats being out of the wind. Now this one here does have the tow hitch right down there, which is pretty cool. Uh, not a lot of models do. This one did come with a factory tow hitch. Uh, as you can see in the back, you have Kia's badge right there, bold and center. Uh, and then it says Sportage on the left and X-Line on the right. Gonna open this up. Big, gigantic cubby space back here, cargo space. Um, I'm a big fan of this. My wife has a Sportage and we use this space quite frequently for softball bags, coolers, overnight bags, all that kind of good stuff. Child anchor locks in all the back seats and then this one's positioned to where you can see the slight recline. So you can recline right there in that vehicle and uh, so if you're going on a long trip it can um, you know, be very beneficial for you. Or if you're tall, get a lot of tall customers that say they like to recline in the back seat there, which is pretty, pretty cool. Opening up the bottom there, you do see the spare tire with the tools. And see that little 
this guy right here. So you could move the floor onto that level and you can get that much more depth. Oops, right there. That much more depth uh, in the floor. So uh, something really cool. Not a lot of people know you can do that. Uh, so if you're using something with wheels, strollers, coolers, that kind of thing, it kind of helps with that. Uh, but very, very big uh, cubby space there. You can use the paddles right here in the back to lower uh, those seats. So you got your paddles there, which I'm gonna pull. I call it near flat. That driver's uh, seat is pushed all the way back. So uh, when it's at its normal position, that'll fold uh, near flat. You have your little 12 volt back here. You have your little uh, light for the back. And then you have your, your punch out holes for your other accessories you can get. So you can get the cargo cover, um, you can get the little net, all that kind of stuff. Little net would hook into those little hooks right there. So definitely, I'm gonna give you just a quick little look at the cabin. Very roomy, very spacious. Uh, I am a big fan of the Sportage. I sell more Sportages than anything. That guy has an automatic lift gate, so it'll close when you press that button. You can also do it from the key fob. You can also do it from the inside of the vehicle. Let me show you the passenger door. So I get a lot of customers, a lot of people comment on the videos saying, no one ever shows you what the passenger seat looks like. So here's the passenger seat. There is not electronic seats on this guy. You do have your manual handle right here. You do have your manual bar underneath. That way you can adjust the seating, but you do not have, um, you do not have that uh, electronic seating there. Very spacious though. I love the soft touches here. Uh, piano black, uh, I can take it or leave it. Uh, it doesn't bother me any but I do love the, uh, the interior cabin here. Okay, let's hop into the second row. I have the keys in my pocket. That's why it's making that beeping noise. So in the second row, um, a lot more quieter when you have the doors closed. Right away, you can see the little um, garment hook right there so you can hang your jackets, that kind of thing. Um, I really like that new design key has been doing last couple years with that. You have your hook in the back for back driver and back passenger. Your hook's right there. That way you can hang bags, that kind of thing. So you can do an easy cross reach uh, if you uh, want to get your purse out of the way or grocery bag or what have you, trash bag. You have your phone chargers there in the seats, which are pretty cool. You got one there in the driver. You got one there in the passenger seat. You have your vents. Or your back passengers so they get uh, you know some air and then you got your little cubby down here that you can put trash or or what have you if you have kids I'm sure they'll they'll stick stuff down there too you have your handles right here with your little garment hook and then you have the light there not too shabby I do enjoy uh, in this model the the little wood trim there the little faux wood trim that they have and then back here again, you have your soft touches with your piano black. Uh, very, very comfortable. I'm what, 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, uh, plenty of knee room back here. I've done long trips sitting in the back of one of these things and never had a problem. Very, very comfortable. Push that down, there you go. Push that down a little bit more flat and then you can kind of see that space that you create child anchor locks again in all the back seats. Uh, and then you also have the little metal hooks that are underneath the, the little seat that the little car hooks hook into, pretty cool. You have your little uh, armrest right here that'll come down with cup holders. So pretty comfortable there. Uh, again, the little, the materials that are used in this vehicle, very soft, nice to the touch. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan, can't, can't complain. We've got all the safety features. So you have your side curtain airbags, you have your um, seat belts there with the, um, the movable features. You can move it down, you can move it up if you're taller, so you could definitely adjust that, get your height right. That way the seat, seat belt's comfortable on you, uh, all that good stuff. All right, let's move to my favorite part where we're probably gonna spend a lot of the time in the video on is I'm gonna show you the features in the menus on the inside of the car, which I get a lot of customers always say, uh, my my salesperson didn't show me this or I didn't, I didn't know my car can do that. So I'm going to show you all those little features. All right. So let's move to the front of the vehicle. 
again, uh, I am in Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, please like and support my channel uh, if you like what you see. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like doing these things. It does definitely help me out because uh, if you buy one of these, I can send you the video and then you have your own little nice walk around. All right, so now we're at the front. So right away, you have your going left to right. You have your child locks right there, window controls, lock, unlock, and mirror controls. Down here, you have your power seating, which people love. So you got your power seating there, backwards, forwards, up and down, and lumbar. And then let's move on to the inside here. You have your illumination uh, control. You can have your trunk control, again, to open and close traction control you can turn that on or off and then you have your um, electronic parking brake coming into the car I'm gonna close the door all right uh, let's move out of the Sun gonna we'll put that guy in drive come around here get out of the direct sunlight okay and let's turn some AC on it's actually kind of hot in here there we go okay so where were we um let's start with the stick with the stock here on the left you this is your lighting stock so you have auto lights right there which I'm a big fan of you can uh, turn your brights on you can turn your lights off all right here with the stick uh, I do prefer auto that way the uh, lights will go on and off as the Sun goes up and down and you'll never have to worry about uh, changing your lighting in this vehicle big fan of that coming over to the other stock on the right hand side this is your um, windshield wiper stock so you have again you have auto oh I'll show you controlling the rear wind windshield wiper so right there you can go low high and off that's your rear windshield wiper see it right there in the mirror cool um, and then you have your you know going up going down all right there and then you have your intensity however you like that so that's kind of cool um not too shabby pretty self-explanatory so here is your main display um your miles till empty right there at the top you have your directional there this vehicle is currently in park if it was in drive it'd say d if it was in reverse it would say r um like the pirate and then you have your information here so you have miles per hour there on the left you have your um, power gauge right there on the right and then that center section right here where the car is you can manipulate that and change so coming here to the steering wheel let me show you how to do that that's going to be two pages button right here common I get a lot of questions on this two pages button so two pages will move you left to right the toggle switch below it will move you up and down so I'm gonna press that two pages button and then I got my trip info, driver info. And if I toggle it up and down, you can see the different options you have. Going one more over, there's your compass, one more over. I actually like this screen on my vehicle. That'll show you the power distribution to your wheels. Uh, it is an all wheel drive vehicle, but you may not have power to all four wheels at any given time. Um, so it's an intelligent all wheel drive system and this um, screen here will show you that. And then you have your um, safety system here. So it's your lane keep assist. It'll show you if you're veering into the other lanes, it'll highlight uh, the little icons that'll tell you what's going on there. So right there, and then you can move this guy up and down the, with the toggle switch. Cruise control right here. So I can't show it to you obviously while we're parked, it's gonna say conditions not met, but that is how you set your cruise control. You have your toggle switch that moves you uh, you know your your miles per hour up and down you have lane forward assist right there so that uses the information in this box up here uh, and in combination with your sensors lane forward assist it'll keep you in the lanes uh, and then move you into the center of the lanes if you're veering uh, back and forth uh, also if it's bad weather two lane highway that kind of thing it'll keep you centered into that lane it'll use the information from either the car in front of you or one lane to uh, get you into into that so uh definitely big help uh they made it a lot of some people don't like it which is weird so if you press that button you're gonna see the little steering wheel appear right there press the button again it goes off um, it's one of those things where 
key is made is super easy. If you don't like it, turn it off. Uh, you can turn off all the systems. You can make them beep. You can make them uh, just warnings only. You have complete control here. Um, coming on the left-hand side, you have the voice assistant. So this guy is really cool. You press it once and you can do a command. Turn on heated seats. Exiting voice recognition. It'll learn how you talk. Let's try this again. Open tailgate. I didn't understand that. Okay, let's Please go to consider. commands. Inside commands. I still didn't understand you. Okay, let's go to commands. There are some available commands. It'll learn screen, how you speak, I promise you, but it, it is not my favorite um, thing about this car by far. So you can search by destination, you can uh, search contacts. It does have to know who your contact is. So if your name is in there, like Betty Lou, you have to say call Betty Lou. Um, and then you can also go into the settings. You can go right to your navigation settings, your sound settings. The part that people don't realize this car can do is right here under vehicle commands. So you can give it commands to turn the, um, the air conditioning to you, like set the fan to your face, warm up, lower the temperature, things like that. But I was trying to get it to do open lift gate. Um, and then you can turn on the seats, turn on seat warmer, turn off seat warmer, set seat warmer to level one. Um, I don't remember if I said seat warmer or not, because you do have to say seat warmer, not heated seats. So this car's command controls, you can do a bunch of different stuff with that. Most people don't realize you could do. And then with the navigation, this is where pe most people think that this is the limitations of the car. You know, this is the only thing this car will do voice commands for. And that's things like resume route, cancel route, set previous destination, that kind of thing. But if the car does do more vehicle commands. It'll just learn how you speak. Um, not my favorite feature of the car because it seems like I can do it with my hands way more faster than, well, more faster than if I did it with my voice. But as you can see, it does not work every time. And uh, I'm not gonna knock the car for that because not a lot of people use that anyway. Coming back over here, mode. Mode's gonna change your audio mode. So if I hit mode, now you can see I can switch to Bluetooth phone, sounds of nature, USB, FM. So if I only use, let's say, my phone and FM radio, I can check those two boxes. And then when I hit mode again, it'll only cycle through those audio options. So um, that's useful for some people answer a call and then the star button so this will answer a call obviously when your phone is connected star button becomes customizable so you can do things here like reject a call or end call which i would probably say most people will do but you can do privacy mode voice memo home map routes cancel all that kind of stuff there's a couple of different options there uh, when you have an ev or a hybrid you can also set your hybrid screen there every car has different options it seems like in that star button so I just wanted to point that out to you. So that's the steering wheel and the controls on the steering wheel. Let's move over to, to the, uh, the infotainment system. So that's gonna be this guy that we're in right now. Little house takes you home, little arrow takes you back. So what do I mean by that? Press the house, it takes you to your main screen here. This is a complete touch screen. You can scroll it left, you can scroll it right, um, that kind of stuff. Now, this is also uh, kind of like a touchscreen inlay. So you can see the map right here lightly. You can see the music and the time. If you wanna go directly to your maps and you're on the screen, just touch the maps. And then there you are, you'll go right into the map setting. So this little white triangle right there, if you ever see that, you could press it and it's going to expand the third box. Inside that third box, you're gonna have um, a customizable screen that you can move up and down. So compass, time, another navigation screen, which I do not understand, um, radio, weather, calendar. When you have your phone set up, you can sync the weather and the calendar uh, right there. So it's a little bit more useful. Uh, one question I get is, hey, I'm on this screen, Vince. I have the navigation. I got the, um, the radio. I want to switch those two. I want the radio on the left. I want the uh, navigation on the right. When you have a, a, a screen like this, let's say I want the radio. You can come down here, go to the little touch screen, click radio, and it'll swap them. You can do the same thing. Let's go back and let's click map. It'll swap them. So that's a common question. Uh, people seem to be impressed by that. Uh, inside the map, you can obviously, when you're parked, you can click the little magnifying glass and punch in your destination. 
uh, little arrow takes you back. So if I click the little arrow, it takes me back to the screen before. And then you can also manipulate the uh, zooming in and the zooming out with those guys. You can set the, uh, the auto feature so it would take you to the same thing. You definitely can see the inlay so you can see that it's going to show you what's around you. So there's a Kia store, obviously. Going into menu, you can also go by route, nearby info, you can save information, you can display traffic info, all kinds of stuff. But what I think is useful in the map menu is actually going to be right here under nav. So if we click navigation, you have this screen. Again, there's a little bit of a glare of the sun. So here you can again search, search uh, for uh, nearby things or search for whatever you want to search to to get to your destination. Nearby points of interest. So I use this pretty frequently when I'm traveling. Um, then it can tell me where the sit down restaurants are, where fast food restaurants are, uh, gas stations. You just click it and then it'll tell you what's near you, the miles, how long, how far away it is. And then you can click this button here, set as destination, and it'll set it right there into your built-in navigation. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm a big fan of that. When you have a route, let's say you're going from Colorado to California, so you got a little route planned out, um, then these options here that are grayed out now will highlight. So you can find information along the route near your destination near center of map, so what's closest to you. Uh, I'm gonna hit the little arrow, take me back one step. And then again, this is all um, a touch screen. So you go left and right, you can see you have hospitals, community centers, police stations. I'm gonna close this box, I'm gonna hit that little white triangle, get the big uh, three boxes there. Go back a step, uh, you do have your customizables down here. So home, work, and a bunch of favorites you can do. Um, what I'm a big fan of is previous destinations, especially if I'm picking up my daughter's friends and they all live at different places and I can never remember who's who, but I remember what street they live on. You can click previous destinations, find the one that you've done recently and just click it. It'll just go into the navigation, super easy. You could save destinations, um, all kinds of cool stuff there in the navigation set setting. So again, I went all the way back. I'm gonna scroll this back one over. So we did map, we did navigation menu, phone, pretty self-explanatory. You can just um, click on phone and pair your phone via Bluetooth. Uh, you just click add. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. So there you on go. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Most cell phones can hook up in about 45 seconds. So that's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, phone projection. So this is going to be your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You do have to have a USB cable for this. Um, but I do have um, a video that I'll post at the end of this video, I believe. If not, definitely the link below. That'll show you how you can get wireless Apple CarPlay and then Netflix and Disney Plus and all that kind of stuff just playing right here on the main screen. It's pretty cool. It's something that I partnered with a company with and I use it uh, pretty frequently with zero. I've had zero issues with it actually now that I think about it, but I use it a lot. Um, it's just a wireless transmitter that gives you wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, voice memos, I've only used that once with one of my customers who's a federal judge um, and he dictates information in the car. He'll do that with voice memos and then he will go in and use valet mode and lock uh, the infotainment system. So it seems to work for him. He's the only customer I've ever used that has used voice memos in valet mode. Uh, but again, that works for him. Uh, you can click the climate button here and play around with climate. It's just a visual representation of the climate features I'm going to show you in a minute little arrow takes me back quiet mode pretty good if you're uh, on a trip uh, I'm not gonna play it or play the music because YouTube will censor me but provides sound to the front seats if the volume exceeds a certain level it'll lower it to the level that is uh, preset by the manufacturer so basically plays music in the front seats not in the back seat so if you have people back there sleeping it works out pretty well I'm gonna go back a step up right there HD radio, so this will show you information uh, like traffic, Doppler radi radi uh, radar, and fuel prices. This is not high definition radio. The company is called HD. Uh, a lot of people get confused. They think this is high definition. It is, but it also, that's not what the HD stands for. But my town's pretty small, so if I click Doppler, it's not going to say anything. If you're in a bigger city, you might have this information that'll just pre-populate. I don't even think traffic works. Nope. My town is just too small. Um, where are we at? Radio. Again, you can just click on that and then you can see the radio. Channel listings pretty easy. It'll just show you the uh, Sirius XM channel listings. Uh, then you have FM, AM right across the top so you can just toggle back and forth. Um, not going to play 
the music because I don't want to get censored. There we go. Um, where are we at? Media. So if you have information on your phone uh, that you want to play, like a US, like a, with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, this is where you'd find that. This also shows you Bluetooth audio, the sounds of nature, Sirius XM, and AM and FM. Sounds of nature is key, is kind of a little relaxing thing they do. Um, they update this from time to time, so we've got a couple new ones, like on a sailing ship. Um, if you ever need a peaceful moment, you can click into here and uh and have that peaceful moment warm fireplace in the winter okay let's get out of that um turn that down let's go to setup okay so setup this is where if you're once you're here setting up your vehicle this is the order that i would recommend doing it i would go to um, well, honestly, I'd go to general first and your salesperson should be doing this with you. Go to general, oops, sorry, not general. Uh, where's that? Scroll one over. Where is Kia Connect? Is that under vehicle now? No. Hmm. There it is, Kia Connect, I just went too far. So Kia Connect, I knew it was on the last screen, I just went too far. I would do it in this order. When you get your vehicle, cut, your salesperson, again, should be doing this with you. Um, honestly, we get paid on it, so I don't see why they're not doing this with you because they're just losing amount of money on this. Uh, you go in, you come in here, you go to Kia Connect Settings, Activate Service, Agree to Terms and Services. A lot of that's mainly just like location services because, uh, what am I doing? Oh, click Agree and then click Next. And then right here, punch in your phone number. The easiest way to do this is do it this way. Come into the settings, just like I showed you, enter your phone number. It's gonna text you a link, follow the information on the link, name, um, password, that kind of thing. The password you create on the car is gonna be the password you create for the app that you'll download, Kia Access, um, Kia Connect. And then um, your username should be your phone number. It's possible it's your email address, but nine times out of 10, it's your phone number. And then boom, then you're set up for the app and you're set up for Kia Connect. So now you could do remote start, remote climate, depending upon which car you have, all kinds of features, remote locate, all kinds of stuff free for the first year. After that, that first year moves to a tiered system. Um, and then you can choose between that and then uh, but I would do Kia Connect first. Why first? Because then you can come back, go, go back a couple steps, go over one. Where were we? Set up. And then go to user profile. And I would do it in this order because now, now you have user profile. Driver one, so you can make it whomever you want. You know, you can make your name there, put it whatever you want. Then you go to image, make your image whatever you want. You have, you know, two pages to choose from. Find yourself a nice little image, go back, link Kia Connect account. So now you can link the Kia Connect account that you just created. So again, with Kia Connect, advanced services are accessible, blah, 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 activate now. No, we're not gonna do that. So then, now you have your Kia Connect account uh, linked. So then the third thing that I would do is come over to vehicle and then set up your vehicle the way that you want. You can play around with this for like an hour. You can go in here, let's just start from the bottom, go to convenience, turn on or off the rear occupancy alert, turn on and off the wireless phone charger, the rear lights. You can do the door setups if you want that two press unlock that I was talking about. You do have the power lift gate, but you also have a smart lift gate, so it will close, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it'll open when you walk up. Some of the vehicles, not this one, but some of the Tellurides and Sorrentos have it to where it'll close when you walk away. A UV9 has that too. Lights, so you can come in here, make sure you have your auto high beam assist on the way that you want. Again, more climate features, cluster. I'm a big fan of cluster theme. Um, the reason being is cluster theme here, you can link to drive mode. So what that means is right here, this little purple outline, when you're in eco mode, um, it'll be one color. When you're in sport mode, it'll be another color. If you uncheck link to cluster theme, you got A, B, and C. So right there, C is that green, B is the red, A is the purple, 
and then you can link it again to drive mode. Illumin I'm just kind of blowing through this real fast. Illumination, you can do your blue light filters and camera settings, all that kind of good stuff. Display content. This is kind of cool when you put it in reverse. You have your little um, where it's going to beep at you in that yellow line. You can extend that view on your, on your uh, rear monitor, your rear uh, camera, which is kind of cool. And then you can turn on and off the parking lines. I don't recommend turning it off, but everybody's different. Little arrow takes you back. Driver assistance. This is where I was talking. You could turn on and off these driver safety um, buttons. So you can go here to parking safety. You can uncheck it and then it'll turn like here, rear cross traffic. Now I unchecked it. So now you're not gonna have it. So again, some people like just the warning, but not the assistance. Some people don't like any of it. They just wanna wing it themselves. Um, you're buying a car with, that comes with these features. I say use the features, you know? Um, but then I would, I would make sure I'd go into vehicle. Now, the reason I say that is if you go and set up your vehicle and then your user profile, it's possible some of the features you set up under vehicle are no longer going to be in your user profile uh, because when you go to set up your user profile, it's going to default from, from the start. So that can I've done that. I've actually done it backwards and had to reset my uh, my vehicle settings back to where I wanted it. So if I were a customer who's brand new setting up Kia Connect, Kia Connect first, user profile second, vehicle settings third. And that way when you have different user profiles, you can have different settings as well. Not all settings, but, but there are some customizable settings for each profile. So that's how I would do that. Um, let's see, voice recognition, screen layout, nothing too sexy here. You can just, you know, again, change your screen savers, change your cluster themes. You can do split screen. This is where, when you have that, that little try button here, like I take the compass out. I don't need the compass. I'm not, I don't know, I don't care where north is. Like that's not something I need. So you can take the, the compass out. You could take the clock out because your clock's right there anyway. So you can take out some of the redundant stuff except for the redundant map. I don't understand why you can't take off the redundant map. But again, I don't love everything that Kia does even though I sell them and I do love Kia. Um, data network. So this guy right here does come with um, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can use, which is pretty cool. So again, you got to activate your Kia Connect service. And then here you can enable the Wi-Fi hotspot. You have your password, which you can change, and then you got your frequency down there. Um, a lot of people are like, hey Vince, why would I need to activate wireless hotspot when my phones have wireless hotspot? True, um, the five gigahertz is probably my best uh, um, answer to that. You should have a stronger signal through the car than you do with your phone. Uh, some phones are pretty powerful now, so it may not be the case every time, but you should definitely have a stronger signal using the Wi-Fi hotspot in the car, and you could have multiple devices connected. Uh, general, so nothing too crazy here in general. Um, you have your units that you can change, like, you know, from miles to kilometers, Celsius, Fahrenheit, that kind of stuff. Change your keyboards. Language, if, if you're not English and you're France or Espanol, there you go. Um, Again, nothing too crazy there, just kind of some normal things to use. Um, everything's touchscreen on this thing, obviously, as you can tell. If you need to change the time, touch the time, and then it'll take you to that setting. You need to change the calendar, touch the calendar, I'm already in there. But if you, need to, if you need to change it, just touch it. And then you can come back here, turn daylight savings time off, change it to military time, all that kind of stuff. A little house takes me back. This is where I would say any questions on the infotainment system because that's a lot of information to go through. Um, play around with it. It's definitely going to be, a, you know, it's definitely a long video when you hit kind of every button. Uh, but I do, I do like to show kind of the everyday features that this car has. Um, this car does have the home link mirror. So as you can see underneath the mirror there, you have your buttons. So you can set up a garage door opener or an electronic gate. If you press the little button, you're gonna see uh, what it looks like. They're super easy to set up. If you have a little garage door opener and then you have this guy, you take the little garage door opener and you press and hold each button like that. And then it's gonna flash orange until it flashes green. So it's definitely not a hard thing to do. Um, and it does, it's, it, it starts, I mean, it pairs pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, let's move to climate. So, um, again, this is going to be kind of a longer video because I want to hit all these cool features on this car. 
So I call this like Kia's little new Star Trek -y screen because right here you have your climate system, your climate screen, dual climate control obviously with the knobs. You can change your blower speed with those guys. You could turn your AC on or off there. You can sync your driver and passenger. You have your directionals right here where the air is gonna blow. You have your front rear defrosters. You have your recirculated air on or off. Then you have your auto climate button there. So pretty interesting. I like it. That's cool. What I really like is you can click this little arrow here and it can change it to navigation. Now, this is already set up to default one to another and it looks like it's set to default to climate. So if you press and hold one of these two buttons and that's either the little fan or the little triangle there, you can turn that default off or you can default it to one or the other. So I just turned it off. So now when I turn it here to navigation, it's gonna stay on this screen and not default back to climate. So now these little guys stay the same, froster, rear defroster, auto climate, and recirculated air. But now this knob is volume and, uh, volume and power. And then this knob here is your tuner. Uh, if you press that in under volume and power, it's gonna turn um, your screen off. Let's see, if I press it again, it'll turn it back on. Um, but map will take you to map. Here's another star. So this is another hotkey where you can have, you know, home, Bluetooth, driver assistance, phone, Kia Connect, um, Wi-Fi hotspot. That's going to be your hotkey to get there. You have your seek and track, radio, media, and setup. Setup takes you right back to that setup screen that we were playing around in earlier. So you have your physical keys there. Personally, I like to change my radio, so I use the that buttons there. Mainly because look how my hand's sitting. It's sitting on the little shifter, and then I can just touch it with my finger. So that's kind of how I drive in cars like this. Um, and so I press and hold the climate button, and then I default climate. Oops, I'm sorry, nope, wrong way. Didn't want to do that. I wanted to press and hold again, default infotainment. So this is your infotainment screen. And then if I turn it to climate, I can set my blower speed, do whatever I want. Okay, that's cool, I'm, I'm cool there. And then driving along, what's gonna do, 10 seconds later, it's gonna default back to infotainment system. So I can just click the little, the little button there with my finger. That's what I have it on, uh, but you have three different options there. Wireless phone charger right down there, USB ports. Um, you have your 12 volt charger there. This little guy right here, when that light's orange, that means your phone is charging. You do have to have the doors closed and the car on for your phone to charge. So if your wireless phone charger isn't working, see if your doors are open. You allow, that, that's usually what that is. Doors open, I'm sorry, doors closed, car on, and then you should be charging. You wanna make sure you get it on the magnet just correctly also, so it, got, it does that, that charging capability. Gear shift, uh, pretty self explanatory, Re park, reverse, neutral, drive. You can throw this car into sport mode. So when you're in drive, I could pop this to the left and then now I can go, I'm in gear one and see I can move it to gear two just by going up and down the gears like that. Whenever you're done playing around, pop it right back into drive. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let me show you reverse. Get a lot of questions on the reverse. You do have the guidance right there in the on the screen. So you can back up and then see what you are looking at. Should have done that earlier, gotten out of the sun. Um, put it back into park and then there you go. Uh, you have heated seats on this model, so heated seats right there. If you have the higher trim level, this is where your air conditioned seats and your heated steering wheel would go, but heated seats only on this guy. You have your drive mode shifter here, so if you turn this to the left or the right, you can cycle through normal, sport, smart, and snow. Smart mode will learn how you drive, which is kind of cool. My wife swears that smart mode saves her more in gas than eco, but um, everybody drives a little different. Whenever it's highlighted orange, that means it's on. So this right here is your forward parking sensors. I can lock the rear wheels by pressing that, and then you can see the little icon there now says lock. So you could, that's your rear wheel lock differential. Auto hold is kind of cool. You press auto hold. Um, now see how auto hold is in white right there. So I use this in drive through So I'm going to put myself in drive. I'm going to creep forward a little bit. And then press down on the brake. And then now auto hold's in green. So now what I can do is I'm waiting in line at a drive through I'm at a red light, whatever. I want to relax my foot. I can now take my foot off the pedal. And then my foot is now relaxed. 
And then when I'm ready to go, all I do is hit the accelerator and away I go. Um, all you gotta do is put your foot back down on the brake, turns green, once she's green, you can take your foot off again. So I actually like auto hold a lot. I'm a big fan, I use it um, quite frequently. Uh, downward heel assist, uh, I'm sorry, down, downhill brake control. Downhill brake control, you know it's on. By pressing the button, it shows up right there on the screen. And then you have your auto off feature. This guy's a pretty polarizing feature. So today is a nice warm day here in Colorado. So when I have this on, and it's kind of counterintuitive because it's called auto off. So when it's on, the light is off. So if I'm sitting at a red light, the car may act like it'll shut down. Uh, and that is the, um, that's gonna help save quote unquote uh, some gas mileage because the car shuts down. I don't think that's necessary. I'm not a big fan of that feature. Not a lot of people are, but that's what that does. To turn it off, all you do is press it. Now you can see the little orange lights on. That means it is off. Auto off is what it's called. So when it's off, the little light is on. You have your cool little cubby space here with your cup holders. So you could just scoop these guys in and you have all this room right here. Um, and then when you're ready for cup holders, you just press these buttons and they pop out. You have your big cubby space right here in the center, which is pretty cool. And then you have this big, beautiful panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back to the third row. Depending upon how you hit it, it'll open the glass, uh, but you can manipulate this any way you want. So you can lightly touch the little guy and it'll just bring the glass forward and then leave the partition down. If you touch it just right going straight up like this, it'll raise the glass for air. And then if you just bring it all the way back forward, it'll close everything and then bring the partition back. You can stop the partition wherever you want too. So a lot of people like that. Up top you have your um, kind of like your swipe little interior lighting. So you could just swipe it with your hand until you turn on. You can also give it a push, uh, but I like the elegant swipe. Kind of cool. Um, you have your lighting controls there, how you want it, Kia Connect, uh, roadside assistance, and then your airbag lights to so it'll tell you what your airbag lights look like. Uh, you have your cool little vents, which I'm a big fan of. I like the design of these vents. I'm a big fan. That vent was actually off, so now that's on. Uh, you have that there on the passenger side and the driver's side. This is such a cool car. Did we miss anything? Such a long video, 42 minutes. If I can help you find a vehicle, if you've made it this far, I do thank you. Uh, I do do um, shipping across the country. I, it's so much easier to have the customer just organize the shipping. Um, I've shipped from Colorado to New Jersey for like 1200 bucks. Um, but you just organize the shipping and we will send it to you, do all the paperwork by mail. It's not that hard, I do it all the time. So if I could help you find a vehicle, please let me know if you've made it this far. Thank you for watching the channel. Um, I don't think we missed anything. Um, so thank you and I shall see you down at the dealership. Thanks guys. Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado. And today I am going to show you a little bit of a video of a new product that I am now partnered with from One Car Stereo. They are an awesome company. They have great products and they have something that I've always wanted in my Kia. They have the ability to project wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, as well as apps like Netflix, YouTube, um, Disney Plus, like all these streaming services uh, through your car's infotainment system. So uh, it's a super great product. Uh, it's very inexpensive, especially if you use the link in this video. Uh, you do get a discount for shopping through my link, uh, which is really cool. Um, but let me show you what this is. So it is a little box and it is right here and it's called a smart AI box. Now this smart AI box, it's super small and it goes right into your USB port. It works with any vehicle uh, that has wired Apple CarPlay or wired Android Auto and it gives it the ability to have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, like I was saying, and it projects it right onto your car screen. So I am sitting in a Kia Telluride and I am watching one of my other videos from YouTube on the screen in the high definition. Uh, it works on any make, any model that has a wired, uh, uh, that has, that, well, basically it does not have wireless 
Apple Ar CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So from my understanding, it works on any vehicle that does not have the wireless component, which is really cool because that's the majority of Kias, to be honest, and the majority is of Hyundais, Fords. I mean, there's there's some makes and models out there that obviously have them, like the lower trim level Kias have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but this $50,000 Telluride I'm sitting in does not. So uh, definitely just taking a look here and how crisp and clear the screen is. Um, I watched Netflix on my way to lunch yesterday on this thing. Um, it is super cool. Now, it's kind of an Android system, which is kind of interesting because I'm an Apple guy. But you just click there, and you can click this little button there and go to your home screen. And that's what it kind of looks like. So you have Netflix, YouTube, a bunch of other things. You can go to the App Store here, and then you can set up uh, different apps. My wife set up the uh, Xfinity Stream app here for our cable so we can stream our DVR on here, which was pretty cool. Um, I, I'm a fan. I mean, it's something I've always wanted. It's It was very inexpensive. I've always been kind of scared to buy one, but now that I've partnered, and partnered with One Car Audio and they were nice enough to send me this and give my customers uh, a promotion, uh, if you follow the link, you get a discount. Um, and it is definitely worth it. I, it hasn't buffered. It hasn't like lagged there. There hasn't been anything I'm gonna click speed uh, play there and there it is wireless Apple CarPlay uh, The phone that I am videotaping this on uh, has no wires attached to it. Uh, it And this is what's going on here. So this is definitely CarPlay which is super super cool uh, works with Android Auto as well and to go back to car, you just hit car, and there you are. <laughs> that rhymed. Um, I don't think I can play any Netflix content because of like YouTube restrictions, but as you can see, I click Netflix, and there it is. Um, it just pops up. There's my little family. I'm gonna pick my profile, and then it will load. Like I said, very little lagging. When you first connect it, like down there, there is a handshake, so it's going to, um, it's, it's, you're gonna feel like a little bit, it takes maybe 30, 45 seconds for everything to connect. It connects with your, um, it connects with your hotspot on your phone, which is pretty important, and then also Bluetooth, so, uh, it just depends upon what you're using, but there's Netflix, and you can go in and look kind of like it does on your TV. Uh, I play stuff, but again, it's uh, I'm not sure what the content was. That's why I was playing my own YouTube channel on YouTube. But super cool product, definitely. If you have any questions, post them in the link below. Um, don't forget to click through. Uh, they have they have a bunch of other things too. I mean, they have a whole suite of products. It's depending upon your vehicle and what you're needing. But this was very very cool. They were generous enough to to send me one to review, and I could not be happier. And again, I'm sitting in a Kia Kia, a, a Kia Kia, I'm sitting in a Kia 24 Telluride SX Prestige, and I uh, could watch Netflix if I wanted to. Uh, it'd be really cool for hybrids or EVs because you can charge uh, at a charging station and pop on, you know, a show, pop on a movie. Uh, super, super cool. I have yet to find any kind of issues with it. Like I said, no lagging, no buffering. It's very, very easy. It does a ton of things that uh, I'm still trying to scratch the surface. When you go into the App Store, because then you have like the Play Store right here, and then you would just sign in with your Gmail account, and they have a whole, like it's your whole Gmail. So you, you can download a whole bunch of apps that I haven't even scratched the surface with yet. Um, like there's Amazon Prime I can do. I mean, the Google Calendars. I mean, it's just, it's, your, it's the Google App Store on your car which is really, really cool. All right, guys, I just wanted to do a quick little video on this to show you what it is and what it does. It is just the Smart AI Box, it's super light, comes with its own cord, a USB and a USB-C cord, depending upon what setup you have in your vehicle. Um, I really just can't be more happier with this product. It's something, I, like I said, I've always wanted. I have zero issues with it. Um, and all you do is you just plug it in and then it just works and it just like i said a little bit of a handshake 30 seconds 45 seconds and then you are good to go um so definitely check it out guys and i will see you guys down at the dealership